Hey guys, Kenny here. All right, we got this BG86, my favorite blower. All right, love that blower. What was happening is, and you're gonna see if there's a little preface or a little preemptive strike here to this video. It would shut off, run out for about five seconds, shut off, the on-off switch didn't work, but it would shut off every five, 10 seconds, or whatever. It didn't turn out to be what I thought it was. So watch the video, question, comment. I know it's a little long, maybe it'll be a little entertaining for you, but check out the whole thing. We'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Kenny here, Ken Small Engines. Hey, I've had this BG86 for a while now, probably 12 years, love it. Absolutely love it, beat the hell out of it, but I love it. Anyway, I'd be running it for about 10 seconds, shuts off, and then run it another 10 seconds, shuts off, and what the heck's going on? Well, uh, it sounded like the ignition was getting killed, so I took the handle off and uh, look at how dirty that thing is. Yeah, full of dirt, full of dirt. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blow that all off, take it out, clean it all up, blow it off, I'm gonna put it back together, and let's see if it shuts off after about 10, five to 10 seconds like it was all morning. Be right back. All right, she's all clean. Let's put her back together. Basically, all you're doing when you're killing this thing is you're hitting the on-off switch. That's all you're doing. You got this little tab here and that hits the on-off switch, the rocker. Get the throttle in. Get the throttle. The rubber mount, nice and rubbery. All right, let's see. Off throttle. All right, let's see what happens. Pump it, choke on. That's not right. All right, let's take it apart. Something, right? Either the switch. Something taint right. What ain't right here? When you go to kill it, you're pushing down on this, and it it is pushing down on the switch. It is actually pushing on the switch. It may be a bad switch. Hmm. There's a ground lug there. 
but I'm wondering where it's grounded to because it doesn't look like there's anything else it would be grounded to. Hmm. These are just in there to act as springs to push this piece back up and down. It is depressing the switch. Let me, uh, let me try starting it and depressing the switch myself. All right, I'm gonna start it up, depress the switch myself. Oops, ow, Ooh, hit my toe, which I just smashed yesterday. That's not fun. Yeah. See, when I hit the switch myself, it works. Maybe there, maybe this piece here is a little worn. It's not uh, hitting the switch. Let me try it again with the piece back in there. All right, I'm gonna try starting her again. I'm gonna try hitting the switch with the uh, actuator. Hold on. All right, guys, Kenny here. We're back with the BG86, and I have the switch. I went to the dealer, and I've got the steel switch. It is a part number 42414308900. Now, it's funny. Most of us want instant gratification, so we go on to Amazonian all the time and say, okay, I want it tomorrow, I want it today, I want it this week. This switch on Amazon was about 10, 12, up to $15, depending on where you buy it from and how fast you want it. Called up my dealer, he said he had it in stock. He said, let me give the business to my dealer, L&R there in Monroe, Connecticut. Love giving him business, great guys. Anyway, this thing listed for under six bucks. How could you beat that? It's an OEM switch, it's a steel switch. All right, let me take this thing apart. Let me put that new switch in real quick. Hopefully we'll solve the problem. Three, uh, one, two, three, four screws, T27. Yeah, I don't want to torque the heck out of it. I know everyone's screaming, don't use the impact gun. Okay. Uh, all right, this should only take two seconds, folks. All right, there's the handle. Handle comes off. Let's take off the throttle. All right, throttle comes out switch actuator comes out there's the baby all right let's take the sucker out of the package all right and the way this thing goes in the o for off goes to the back so 
And hey, everyone's saying, what is this thing here, this eyelet? What is this eyelet that goes to the kill assembly? What that is, is an anti-static strap, okay? So when this grounds out the coil and all, it grounds out to the plastic handle. So it doesn't create static when this thing is turning around, okay? When this impeller is going, a lot of times these things create static. And on the backpacks, they have a wire hooked to them so it grounds out the plastic. Because a lot of times, like rubbing your hair with a balloon, it'll create static electricity. This does the same thing with the plastic. And you want it to be insulated, so they put this little ground strap on there. That's what it's for. Everyone's always saying, oh, what's that for? That's what it's for. All right. Let's take out this switch right here. Very simple. Two wires. One and the... Uh, Oof, two. All right. There's the one in the back. The brass one goes in the back. The blue one goes in front. Let's slide her in. All right, slides right into the shelf. Now we will put the actuator in. We'll put the throttle back together. Throttle's back together, the actuator is there. All right, everything's there. Put the handle back on, four screws. There we go. Throttle operates good. The lock, the lock works. So we know everything's in good position. Let's put these screws in. Let me start with the middle screw. Right. You're still in camera? Let me see. You're still, yeah, you're still there. All right. Then we're gonna start her up. And we're gonna see if, number one, does she shut off? because it wasn't shutting off before. Last screw. All right, here's the old switch. We're gonna test it out after. All right, here we go, ready? Choke is on, prime for a good time. Let's start it up, ready? How many pulls, two? Oh, prime it, choke on. Before, I would hit that switch, wouldn't shut off. Let's see if she does. No! Wow! Whoa! She doesn't shut off, people. Wow! Choked it to shut it off. It didn't shut off. There's a bigger problem out there. What is the bigger problem? The switch is wired. Why isn't it shutting off? Whoa, that's a new one. Could I have a bad switch? Let me get my meter. Let me test the switch. I'll be right back. Well, here's one for me, guys. I didn't test the old switch with a meter. Here's the old switch. Now watch, continuity, you hear beep, ready? Okay, here's a switch. One end, the other end, ready? That's a good switch. And I'm sure the one on here is good too. What the heck is going on? Well, it's gotta be something in the wire going down to the coil. All right, I didn't think it would be this bad. Like I said, I only spent six bucks, so I'll keep it as a spare. Let's take off the cover and see what's going on at the coil end. Three screws, is that it? 
All right. Three screws. All right. What's going on there, genius? All right. You got a piece of piece of dirt in there. All right. Ah, oh, let's see. Here's the coil. You've got the blue wire going up to the kill switch, and then the other end of the kill switch goes to the other end of the coil, which is a metal clip for ground, so that when you kill it, you're connecting the blue, the coil, to ground, all right? Let's see if that ground is actually ground. We got the tester again, we'll put it on continuity. All right, so we'll ground, say we'll hit, hit the fly, well that's a ground, yep. Yep, that leader, the black lead is a ground, okay? So, let's see, we'll hit the black lead up here. Aha, the black lead up here. See, no ground. That black wire, when it goes around to the switch, is broken somewhere, all right? See, I'm touching both ends of that black wire to the connector up top, I'm getting nothing. There's a break in this wire somewhere. Something's not right. Let's figure it out. Let's take off this wire. Where's the break? Take off the spark plug lead. Where is the break? There's a break somewhere, people. Where is it? This video is getting a lot more interesting, isn't it? Okay, this is the wire that should be connected to this wire. This should be one black wire. It should beep when it hit both ends. And it's not. Why is that wire not connected? What is going on? How about up here? Nope, there's a break in it. Somewhere there's a break. All right, we're gonna take this wire out. It's held in a few spots. Ah, oh, look at that, people. There you go. There's the problem. A piece of shrink tubing where the wires connect is disconnected. So what I have to do is I have to take the shrink tubing off. I'll have to cut it off, right? Let me see. Oh, yeah, see? Shrink tubing, it failed. See, you got two wires that aren't connected anywhere. That was the problem. For some reason, where it was pushed into the housing here, when it got pushed in, it sliced these connections. Look, there's nothing there. It sliced them clear off. All right, now that I know that, let me put them together. Let me shrink tube them. I'll be back in a minute. Now it's getting real exciting, huh? All right, guys, I'll be right back. All right, it turns out when the wires break, you don't have enough to splice in where they were because you just don't have enough wire. And I didn't want to buy a new harness because that's about eight or nine dollars. So I had some uh, thin white wire there. I think it's telephone wire. It's real thin stuff. And all I did was I spliced it in so I could run it up to the top here and uh, hopefully it'll work. All right, a little shrink tubing here and there and a little magic and uh, let's put it back together and let's uh, see if she'll work now with the old switch. I put the old switch back in. I said, I'm not using the new switch. I gotta, I'll keep that. All right, let's put the covers on. Let's see if she works. All right, first thing we gotta do, spark plug wire or spark plug boot. All right, cover. I didn't realize how nasty this thing was. There we go. All right, three screws for the cover. This turned out to be a long video, folks. Sorry. But hopefully 
It taught you something. Taught me something. It taught me to make sure the wires are good. And it's funny, when you see these things for sale, these switches, some of them come with a harness, some of them don't. Now I know why. Okay, if you're gonna buy the switch, you know, buy the harness too. Makes a difference. All right, let's put the actuator back on. Okay, there's the actuator. Put the throttle back on. Oh, we're having fun here, folks. Ah. Throttle. Ready? There's the throttle. Okay. Actuator. Actuator. All right, throttle and actuator done. Handle. Okay, handle. One. Ah. Three more screws and we're home free. Or we're not, who knows? Two. Three, last one. Four, okay, moment of truth. I'm gonna set you up so you can see me holding this thing, doing it the right way. All right, you ready? Yeah, here we go. All right, we're gonna start her up. Right now, throttle is working. Throttle lock is working. Momentary is working. Let's start her up. All right. She's running. Ready? Hey, look at that. Let's try it again. Let's try it for a third time. <laughs> Fixed. All right. Well, this is probably the longest video on replacing a switch, but here's the, here's the story, folks. When you think that it's the switch because it doesn't work, check the wiring going to the switch. In my cases, the blue and black wire were separated. They weren't fully connected, so the switch was good. It was the wiring. So check the wiring, because it may not be the switch. And even though it's only a $6 switch, it wouldn't have fixed the problem. All right, guys, that's it for now. Any questions, comments, suggestions, subscribe. I got a decent channel. Give me a like, hit subscribe. Most of my uh, well, viewers aren't subscribers. I don't know why. More stuff like this, comments, questions, suggestions, give them to me. We will talk to you soon. Bye.